Hello everyone, welcome to another video and today we'll be looking at programming languages great for beginners. Number 1. Python Python is super easy to learn. Although Python is lacking type safety, it's great for rapid prototyping. You can create simple scripts to automate your workflow. It also has a great community such as holding events like PyCon every year. Whenever I build something, I usually build Python as a backend using frameworks like Flask or Chatless. Chatless is AWS version of basically Flask. Also, if you're into data science, Python is usually the way to go. They have a great community of libraries using ML, deep learning, AI, and computer vision. Number two, JavaScript. In my opinion, JavaScript is very similar to Python. It's very simple to learn and easy to write. JavaScript is great if you're interested in front-end development. There are frameworks like React and React Native by Facebook and Angular by Google. If you're interested in doing back-end development, Node is also a great option for using JavaScript. Similar to Python, JavaScript is also not type safe. To combat type safety issues, Microsoft announced a language called TypeScript. TypeScript is a type safe JavaScript language, which compiles back to JavaScript at the end. So if you're interested in using JavaScript, check out TypeScript if you want type safety. Number three, Java. You can never go wrong with Java. Java was first developed by Sun Microsystems and later acquired by Oracle. Microsoft also created a language which is very identical to Java called C Sharp. Unlike the prior two languages, Java is type safe. Java uses something called the JVM, which is the Java Virtual Machine. Back in the days, when you write code, you actually have to compile code depending on which platform you're using. The JVM is a virtual machine that runs regardless of the platform that you're running in, and it will compile the code that you wrote to the platform that is um, running on. So they had the tagline, write once, run everywhere. Now those three words for beginners, and these are some bonus languages that I put in, not just for beginners, but for experienced developers as well. First, C++. C++ is usually a language used when you're in a time sensitive or resource sensitive industry. The financial industry mostly uses C++ because their transactions are very time sensitive. Some of the difficulty using C++ is that you have to manage your own memory. Coming from a Java background, learning C++ for the first time, I was so confused by the memory management that I had to do. Using Java is like having a butler that cleans after you. But if you use C++, you have to clean up after yourself, which kind of makes sense, but it's more hard work. Next is Kotlin and Swift. These two programming languages are used for mobile app development. Kotlin is made for Android. The language was developed by a company called JetBrains. If you're familiar with the IDE called IntelliJ, it's the same company that makes that IntelliJ IDE. Kotlin is also a JVM based language, meaning that if you learn Java, you're not gonna have a hard time learning Kotlin. Swift is a language for iOS development. The language was made by Apple and previous to Swift, Object C was the development language for applications. Kotlin and Swift are not only just for mobile app development, but they are advertised as server-side development as well. But I've never seen anyone using Swift or Kotlin for server-side development. Last but not least, Dart. But Dart doesn't come alone. It comes in hand with a framework called Flutter. Dart and Flutter are both made by Google. It's Google's take on Facebook's React Native. Basically, React Native and Flutter, you write one code base which will compile down to iOS and Android applications. Because Flutter is a much newer framework than React Native, the community is definitely much smaller. But one big benefit that Flutter has over React Native is performance. The Flutter engine is able to compile code down into machine language, which is much closer to the native apps. However, as good as it sounds, Flutter can never outperform the native applications using Kotlin or Swift. Still, if you lack engineers, it's a great option to develop one code base that can export to iOS and Android, right? So in this video, we looked at programming languages which are great for beginning developers and also some bonus languages which are great for experienced developers as well. What is your favorite language? I might not have covered it in this video, but let me know down in the comments. Thumbs up if you like this video and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. To compile code down into machine language that is much similar to the React Native. <laughs>